so what we define the strings as like uh, they are the characters enclosed within a single or double quote whatever you say right or uh, triple maybe or at the time triple multi strings if we're talking about right so they can be single within enclosed within single code double code or maybe sometimes as triple code right so we can give it as okay uh, fine so these are the strings right so uh, there are a lot of string methods to follow up uh, we'll go one by one right but before going with the string methods we'll be understanding about the replications and the uh, rest of the things right so uh, in strings the basic feature is about the strings replication and then comes like something called as concatenation okay so one thing is particularly replication which is i think we have dealt with some further off okay in the replication part what you do you take a string and then you do some mathematical uh, kind of things right like addition multiplying like those things basically multiplication is called as like replication of it. so uh, let's say that i have a variable and that is like anything let it be apple right now like i want to print it for five times what i could have the option i can use for i in apple or for i in var print i oops so like what you get the individual uh, what do you say the individual substrings of that particular string right individual substrings so i did not actually want to print like this right so what you can do is you can take the variable multiplied by 5 to be getting as the value of apple 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 like that right that is called as something called as replication right so to make spaces within this uh, we can make it like uh, make spaces you can give a gap over here and then multiply it with five to get a gap on integer what is that mm. oops okay okay yeah so you can make changes in there to get us like things over there right you can simply multiply with the apple or make a variable and then multiply it with the things right that is something called as replication okay now coming to the concatenation concatenation means uh, adding something in a string right one string being added to the same string right the same thing is being added up once and once again right let's say if i say that this is my first string and this is ice right in the first string itself if i say sorry not like this like this if i say crease right so what what exactly i'm doing is in the first string there is ice and i'm adding one more thing that is cream i'm adding cream to this first string right so coming up with the first thing if i get to print this so i would be getting Ice cream. Right, if I give a hyphen over there, that will be better. Something like this. Right? So that is called as concatenation. Like if you're having a yeah. name, anyone speaking something once again? Uh, like, what did you give the space after I? So, how did you do that? Mm -hmm. The space after each word apple. Each Before word. it was attached, right? How okay, do yeah. you give space for? Nothing. You you just give a space in the string. That's it. Like you, if you don't give us a uh, space, it would be obviously something like uh, like if you give a space over there, then it would be better, right? Exactly. Right. You can give it anything. Right? You want a hyphen. You want a slash. Whatever you want. Okay. So like this is called as concatenation. Now let's say that uh, if there is a name, uh, let's say. Jaunty, right? I think I'm spelling wrong. Yeah, it would be Jaunty, right? something like that, right? 
and in the name itself I give this is equals to so obviously when I go to print the name oops, we'll be getting the name John T. Rowe something like that right so you can take the name input and then we can combine up the th same things over there right like again you can do like concatenation can be make like this right and another thing is like if you are taking a name let's say you are taking a first name you are taking a last name and you are taking a uh, sorry middle name and a last name let's say right so first name is like you are taking the input something like this input enter first name whatever it will be there right middle name input input middle name and let's say for the last name sorry right so that should be there so first name last name and then the uh, middle name and the last name right so what you can do is you can make a name total of right full name you can say up name is there and that would be f name m name l name that's it right so whatever you write as like let's say such a middle name is nothing that's it right so printing up the name what's the expected output something like this right this would be the output because uh, the middle name is empty up right that we, have, uh, we haven't added up anything now this is something called as like uh, like one method where you are adding up a string and string right you, you are adding up the strings right so that is being but the replication and other things are the different thing right you, you cannot add a number to a string right that can be like a type to be like mentioned up like if you're having a name right if you're having like uh, let's say apple is there and you want to add 45 with that will not be there right because this can only concatenate string but not the integer to the string right this cannot concatenate any integer to the string so what you have to do is you have to convert this into the string so that's like apple 45 and then that can can be made up right so input is very much important while working with uh, any such things right so uh, let's deal up with the input things uh, input function right so this helps you to take up the input from the user whether it is a numeric input a complex input and any such things over there right mostly a time we use this eval most of the times right so like enter anything up oh not exactly like this okay yeah hmm so v equals eval okay Right. Input, I think now we can take an input. Enter number. Will that work? Right. So 23J. 23 uh, 5J. Uh, okay. 23 plus 4j right but let's see if we cup one second v equals when the type of v 23 plus 5j yeah that's what the first thing and let's say if we have input simple input working with the same things if we say enter number right 
friend v. sorry the type of v and let's copy this let's run this let's say 23 that would be a string okay uh, like let's run again let's say cool that is obviously a string let's say like if you want to take an input from an integer you can run this like yeah, 23 would be better integer right for the float it would be obviously f l o a t so for the string you don't have to write up any things right uh, but for the floats and all you will have to write so for complex what you do is have you done this in the college for the complex you have to take this evaluation eval evaluate right so it oh, takes so uh, it takes it. a complex uh, input from there right so that is being yeah, actually, eval is a key is not a keyword right mm -hmm. no actually this question was asked in our uh, internal test okay this is not a keyword mm. see the best way to identify a keyword, see what you what you can do is I've shown you right how many keywords are there? There are 45 keywords over there. Let's make it over again. See. That's being the thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and all, right? So see what what a keyword is, right? When I write all these things, what happens? See. Let's copy up. Yes. Paste. See everything will be in bold letters, in bold green. I guess I should say, right? Can you can see this all right? These are the keywords. But when I talk about the functions, these are green in color but not the bold. Let's take any functions. Print is a function. Let's write print. See, see the difference. This is not bold as comparison to this all. Like when you work in the Jupyter, it's very easy to identify the keywords and like with the colors even. This is not a keyword right i'm oh, sorry this is yeah this is not a keyword let's talk about like uh, if i say for any other function let's say input input is is it not a function oh, sorry is it not a keyword see so all these keywords are bold in color and the jupyter notebook and the functions are light in the color right but have the green colors so that is not a function oh, sorry that is not a keyword okay that will be used to take like a complex input okay, mostly like this question eval question you get also in the microsoft examination but they can give your program using for this right that's a different part okay so uh, like whenever you take with the v here you can also go with the p print so if this is a complex number obviously what you can do is we dot the real part so you can do that right 34 plus 6j you can see the real part of that 34 right so you cannot take input for every time for the uh, from the integer and float about the complex numbers and all right so that's being one kind of thing one 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 process of how you can take the inputs first of all right the second thing can be done right like uh, a and b you want to take two inputs at a time right most of the times like uh, some many uh, very many programs comes like you have to take three numbers and then you have to identify like which number is greater up right like something like that right so uh, what you can do is you actually have to take three times input a take the input b take the input c take the input right what you can do is a b c keep a comma that's a brilliant method a b c take an input like if you're uh, if you want to take up in this like the best way is to take up all the things inside a string right first take in the string and then if you want to convert you can convert up there so enter numbers or anything right enter whatever you want and just run that so like uh, you'll have to give a gap two three four enter too many values oops sorry to unpack that so like just done okay let's run two three four done so you have to use this split one right what that does this will split up the things accordingly like if you don't give any uh, parameter inside that fu for the function, if you don't give any parameter, it will split the things with a space, right? Because I have given a space, 2, then C space, then 3, then C space. Now if I'm going to print my A, B and C, A, B and C, I'm going to get 2, 3 and 4 respectively. So for uh, A and B, it's 2 and 3, I like that. Okay, I think you get it right there. Yeah. Something like this. Two, 
three three four one a great okay so this can be done like uh, why with all the things it cannot be done like this is not because the split function works only with the string like if you want to take inputs with uh, some of the other things that cannot be done respectively right so what you can do is you can take it there and then you say like a is equals to integer of a it's doing other like four five six and being there so you can get it there right so if you go on to check the type of a would be an integer right so the conversions can be done like afterwards like picking up the inputs over there and like that would be better right so this is all about the input function right how to take uh, inputs from the complex from the integers and all like taking up inputs and then we compare it and like, com converting the things up right because many a times you, you would waste your time right liking up uh, writing up the lines and lines over there right so why to take up the lines like uh, when you in an instagram account or like uh, anything like when you are even loading up uh, like let's say you're making a small program to accept any instagram account or uh, like uh, to get access to your gmail account so why to take every time the very concerned things from the user like if it is giving you input you have to take uh, only enter email enter mail right so here we're giving you the mail address right and that's not probably every time like if you give something like uh, like in the capital So it's better just to write the username at the rate gmail.com is not even necessary, right? Like if you write something like this, uh, so uh, do we have any caps lock? Like, do we have any email ID starting with the caps and all? Like, everything in the caps, no, right? So, what you can do is you can take something like lower, if you better, the functions, not to making it in the lower in the second line, you can just make it lower up here, right? So even if the user is going to give something it's going to like come in a lower part and what you can do rest is like you can give print okay I'm not going to print up here uh, you can do gmail plus at the rate of gmail.com so that's just to identify and to rectify the things and all right so let's say username given up with an gmail domain so if the user is not providing you can uh, along right you can write up the things exactly and if the user writes up there then it's okay right because the program works like if and only if in the gmail uh, split up in the gmail splitting because this is how the program works if in the gmail split with that the rate is equal equals to uh, something called as uh, gmail.com if it works over there then only it's going to give you a permission like then it's only going to print something like okay go ahead with the password right so only if gmail but see uh, i could not see any uh, answers over there why because in my splitting in my splitting i don't have any inputs uh, like something like add the rate so no output is being generated right so if i have it there so it's compulsory to have at the rate of something like in the domain in your email id so for that if the user gives only its username then what you have to do is you have to add your domain to the user id and then you'll have to split it and then you have to check whether the user id exists or not right that's being the process a lot of being like uh, a lot of lengthy processes is that right Okay, uh, moving up next. Uh, let's talk about the operators. I think we have discussed regarding some of them, right? But still, let's go with the basic ones. So first, we have arithmetic operators. Okay. Now, how it goes? Like uh, you go with the addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, then exponentiation, then the remainders, then the like something that is called modulus, and then the integer division. I think we have done right. Arithmetic, we have done. Yes, sir. Okay, let's go with the comparison then. Comparison, I think we haven't done then. Okay, fine. So, for the comparisons. 
So what it does with the names, so like you can get to identify that it compared to variables and then break down to a boolean value, a discrete value over there, right? So the fundamentals of this is like you go with the equal equals to, you go with not equals to, you go with greater than, you, sorry that is greater than, you go with less than, you go with greater than equals to, you go with less than equals to, and I think that's one, one, two, three, four, five, and six. That's that's it. So these are the basic operators to use up. Like if you say four is equal equals to, I don't think that is not much one to brief on, right? 4 equal equals to 5 will be giving you obviously false, but 4 not equals to 5 is going to give you true. So that's in the results false and true. Like, and as I said, like uh, we would also holding the outputs as like many a times we would get 0, 1, but not here in this case is right. So that is exactly the uh, discrete results we could just say that right. Then if you say 3 greater than 4 and then 4. Uh, Three less than four would be better. Results right easy. Right, so in this case, right, what you have to do is like uh, the, what the machine does. It goes for checking two conditions. First, it goes for checking the less than, greater than, and then if it is not less than or greater than, then it goes for checking up for the equalities right so, like if it is equal then it's okay right you will be getting so any one condition if satisfied you will be getting a one that the positive that is true results okay so like false and true up here too right so this being the thing the comparison one and you can go for comparing any such things like if you're going to go for the ASCII codes and all right do you know how to get the ASCII codes no sir oh okay fine See, uh, so to see up the ASCII codes of any such alphabet number or anything, right? What you can do is you have to just use the function of or ordinal. We say it ordinal. So ordinal of any number one. Uh, oh, sorry. That's always in a string format. So it's forty nine. Right, for A, if we want for A, it's being 65. So you can take up all the things respectively and then you can split up the things accordingly. So you can get the ASCII codes right uh, in the net event. Can you get all the ASCII words? Mm -hmm. Instead of uh, separately writing A, B, C, D, would mm -hmm. we get it together? Yeah, you, you can the write. The we got right in the same way. Can't we get ASCII codes for all the alphabets and numbers together? Yeah, you can get it like uh, uh, that. What that function is? One second. Mm. That is print something off. Function of the show for FOSCI, I think it's a L for T. ORD. Yeah. That's. Oops. No, no, no. That's what the function. Mm. Function is not remaining. Oh, okay, let's continue. We'll get the function remind and let you know exactly like you take the inputs and then you find for using a for loop. We can do that for like for i and something like that. And uh, what exactly is that? Mm. This question is asked for the tests also. Ask you both, yeah. Like you uh, gave a test, right? In that, it's that. Hmm. What is it? Question? Mm, what question is was? The code which prints the ASCII value. What? 
options no no like you asked to print all the ascii values this question was asked from your test sir the assignment which you had given in that this question was there okay so, i yeah. thought in the test it was given okay fine so you, yeah you can use ord over there so get so i got that actually instead of putting ord of a b c separately hmm can't be get it in a whole hmm hmm you can get it there um that is done using one more function is there chr something like uh yeah chr would work one second let me try uh mm, for i in a range of let's do 55 till let's see if it works mm. CHR would work better in the C++ mode. Let's see if it works. Uh, equals to CH if it works. Let's see. Order expected length of one but end found. is this uh yeah but it see uh, you can get it there mm, i think that this one it could not exactly this method but this is one of the method to get the things it took 255 is the last it would yeah so whatever a blank will be there Hmm. This can be one method, right? So you can use chr character function to get the things. Okay. Right. This function, like you take an input, something like till one to two hundred and fifty-five, uh, and then like uh, what to do? Where's the yeah? So then you take an input in the ch, like for every of the number or any of the string, what you do is you get a character input of that. So through that you will get the ordinal, right? So this returns you a character basically chr, you know, right? From an integer, it will be returning a character that will be converted into a string, and then you can easily get the ASCII codes of that. Okay, got it. Yes. Yeah. Right. With the number, you it gives you the character basically. Like for with what number, what character it represents. In the ORD, what we get, we write the uh, character to get the number. Here we write the number to get the character. That's an easy process, I think. So that's why this uh, for numbers it's not displayed, right? Mm hmm. Sorry. For numbers it's not displayed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, no. The these are uh, blank spaces, right? For for this there is no such like they consist of numbers, so there is no such uh outputs for that right but for the uh like if we go for character let's let's see what, what is that character of 31 and 32 chr of 31 let's say that's something and okay so that is not a, exactly a character right that's one something like bitwise inputs are there okay so for the numbers it will represent your character and for those such things like if you write up the ORD like we we can see that uh, for asterisk is 42 so for ORD what we have to do is we have to write asterisk and then, then to get the output as right that's 42 right but if you write CHR of 42 to get the things as 50, that's see that's reverse of the things right so character and ordinal right so you write the ordinal of any character to get the number of that asking the value of that right and if you write the ascii value right if you write to get the character you can use chr function over there so that is how it works okay so it's a reverse operation of the ordinal function or the character function whatever you say right okay so yeah, so for the blank spaces, it gives you the Unicode values over there. 
okay fine so that is like how wasci code works okay you can go with the ord or else what you can do is you can take the inputs from all the a to z right and then you can uh, bring up the things respectively you can get the ascii's very easily if we go for uh, let's say ascii codes so you can get better things available okay fine is this good no bad is this so 239 say 255 so from 128 uh this is also bad no so from zero you can see up like it is something different for like enter and all they have also their ascii codes right like for zero it's null so it's something egg it's tab lf and all all such every buttons have their own ascii codes but it's starting in a bit directly from 48 or like uh, I think that's space 32 something like that and you can get the respective outputs on there that's it okay moving ahead hmm. so uh, these are all like so comparison is done with that right many a times you would see that you compare some word with some word like what is that word why is that Hmm. Near time it works like word is equal equals to word. But why it is not? Only just because of the cases? No. Also because of the ASCII codes. Like let's say the ASCII code of A, B, and C and D. Okay, leave leave it, leave it. You can compare it like A is greater than B. false okay so like that you can go with the ASCII code why because ORD of A and the ORD of B uh, let's see what comes so it's 97 98 98 is obviously not less than 97 so that's being different right and being placed with it such as boolean operators also work right so in boolean operators we have and or and not respectively so if you remember the comparison operators we have the two of the operators there greater than equals to less than equals to same as work in the boolean operators so in the boolean operators hmm. so here we have something and or and the not okay now where to use which one now in the boolean there are two binary operators can you let me know what are those two binary operators zero and one zero and one that is the value of boolean like true and false what is binary means what does binary means The numbers which are 0 and 1 yeah number like 0 and 1 okay that's fine so apart from like uh, among this 3 and or and not which operators give the result in the binary formats true and false true and false yeah that's okay uh, okay okay fine you didn't understand the question i'm See, getting this uh, yeah or an and is like something which can which uh, like compare within the values of like two binary operators like these are the two binary operators which first compare the value of a true and false uh, condition and then give you a result like apart from like not what not does it just give you a negation of the value like if it is true it will return you false if it is false it will return you true that's it like how it goes but in case of and and or what it does it first go for checking up the conditions like see if i say one and one so there is a condition true and true 
then you are going to get something results if I say not of one oh sorry uh, it's negation sorry not of one so that is going to give you a basic value that is false right exactly but this is not going to check for any condition it's just giving a negation of that that's being the output so whatever output you want you just give a uh, right or not over there you'll be getting a results respectively but in the case of a and and or right if you if you even take for the or case you'll get the results respectively right there there it gets to check first the conditions so that's being that right so based on these conditions you get to know about the truth tables right so we have four truth tables for that one one zero one and respectively so i think that you know right it's not need for the discussing all these things okay so in the and what we do is what we do in the and multiplication or addition multiplication mm. that is one multiplied zero one multiplied one one and all right uh, in the or what we do is addition that's the fundamental concept okay fine all right so let's see if you can do some questions or not let's take some questions easy questions okay hmm. so the question is take two input from the user don't need to solve this try uh, this give the hence how to solve this okay whether they are equal or not okay so take two inputs from the user and compare whether they are equal or not any answers quick how to do Num one is equal. Num one, num two, okay. Num one. Is equal to input. And I'm quite lazy, so I take yeah, things exactly in the same way. Yeah, num one, num two, then input. Enter the values. Enter the values. If num one. One is second, one second. <laughs> I'm very uh, shorted, guys. So I. Needs to convert the things first of all. Otherwise, it will not work. You know, like you will have to take integers. So you could have given there only, right? So. Uh, here. Okay. In input. Here, yeah. here. It will yeah. not work. Why? Because see, split is not a function of an input. No, like if you remove split and if you give in. Okay, you want to do okay. something like that. Okay, I will do that too. One second. Yeah, so num1, num2, integers done. Yeah, so if num1 is equal to, is equal to num2 equals to num2, then they are equal. Print equal to zero. Else? No. Else, okay, we are using else. Fine. Else. Is it compulsory to use else? use this sir no right uh, no it's not compulsive just to compare whether they are equal yes or not so if yes then it's true if not then it's false so what you have to do is why to take up this things uh, so long you can just go and see like print num1 equal equals num2 that's it if it is correct then it will come true if it is false then coming false that's it right you have to write up if and all right See what I'm trying to say is like, let's take the values three, four, false. That's it. Done. Without without using the condition, the for loop and all the loop. Yeah, just like print. why why we are going to check for the conditions? We just have to uh, see take two input from the user and compare whether they are equal or not. So the, see, I have also compared. This is a comparison operator, right? I have compared it. So these are not equals. False. That's it. Okay. See, why I'm trying to say this, like, because uh, when you go for the interviews, like, on the school basis, the <laughs> college basis, when you go for there, you can can't do something like this, right? You have to write if and all, and only you are going to get marks. Right? 
but when you go for the interview why they will see like how smart and how catchy you are going to solve the things respectively well for a heavy a very easy questions also like how much simple and simple things you are using but to go for the complex i we all know like very the, the common method everyone is going to use is that if and else right very common method you take the input and then compare the first of all whatever comes in the mind is like take if okay and then go for the else and like okay done but you also forget the very basic concept that is comparison just read below some like 2 4 2 5 uh, lines ago where is that from not 4 5 where is that yeah just here see comparison yeah see very first bringing up okay got it try to solve things in a very less time okay you were saying something that i should take integer here okay let's paste it uh int here as the input and remove this split run this 3 4 invalid literal for integer with base 10 for the error hmm any suggestions to solve this error no i can just suggest that you have to separate the num1 and num2 by having separate inputs subtract separate sir Sub, uh, separate yeah by using like num1 is equal to int of input enter the value and num2 is equal to int of input enter the value separate those two okay okay separate those yeah yeah that can be done like i am quite lazy so i like what is the reason here sir why it's not coming what why is not coming yeah like okay this is uh, yeah this is why it is not coming because this split is one of the function which works in the string and here i am taking a string input and then i am splitting them and then making it in the, in the integer here what you are doing you are taking an integer input at twice right you are taking an integer input with a gap and the gap is not like uh, one of the thing in the integer right you cannot take uh, gaps in the integer you cannot write like type of 3 4 something like this this is an invalid syntax why right? because there is a gap that is not valid and that is being there as a output that's the error okay that's being the thing but if you just write input uh and then you do the things that will be done 3 and 4 respectively but that will be a string in this case right we will have to write split and that's done okay so that is the thing right moving next quick uh in this uh ups copy okay next question okay this question it is uh, solved smartly okay yeah. next uh, for the time six seven or uh, five so this time take three inputs from the user and compare whether any of them are equal or not see try to understand the question what you have to do is you have to take the inputs three inputs from the user and then you have to check whether the user has given any same input or not yeah now let me know how can we do this num1 comma num2 comma num3 hmm one second let me copy this copy is Just change of head. Num three. Num three. Uh, integer of num three. Yeah. Then print num one is equal to num is equal to is equal to num two. Mm -hmm. Or no, one second, one second. Then what what we have to do is print print num is equal to is equal to num two. Num one 
equal equals lamp to or or okay num2 is equal to is equal to num3 num2 equal equals num3 or num1 equal equal to num3 num1 equal equal to num2 3 num3 so 1 equal equals 2 2 equal equals 3 and then 1 equal equal 3 right so any yeah. numbers would be getting up there if if there is any results we'll be getting up the results accordingly so let's say one two one so true so if like compare whether any of them are equal or not so yes it's equal okay so it is equal that's the thing it hasn't asked you like which of them are equal or not only ask if any of them are equal yes equals that's it done okay good if it asks like to check or if all of them are equal or not, then what to use? To change up the things here, you will have to apply yeah, and that's it. Okay. If when it come all, that's a compulsion, then you have to check for and. And if, if it is optional, then you go for all. Hmm. Sir, here don't you use that uh, pipe symbol? This? Use this one, okay. One, two, one. Oh, are we given something wrong? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, num one, num two, num two, num three, num one, num three. That's done, right? Wait, num one, num two, num three. What's happened? Uh, one is equal equals to one second. It's saying wrong over there. Hmm? Oh, what's the fact? It's been one, two, three. One second. Logical simple giving wrong. Due to the logical, uh, oh, can be a capital or no, it is maybe due to the because that is one of the kind of uh, what is that that exactly means of that is like binary or okay for that. It can give you some wrong results. Let's see it again. Oh. See what it does like uh, it copies the bit first of all, right? And then it goes for the operation. But that's a probably the mistake would be there. Hmm. So that can be the problem because it goes for the bit wise operations and all that is also called as bitwise operator with the or bitwise or we can say a binary or bitwise or and like if i say x y equals 61 can't apply to literal Okay, see, you know about the binary digits. If I say it is equal to 61, that means it is 0, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 0. Oh, sorry, 0, 0, 1, 1, uh, 1, 1, 0, 0. Oh, 0, 1 might be there. Yeah, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. You know about conversions, how the binary digits are being converted? Yes, sir. Yeah, so I think 61 would be 0, 0. Uh, one one 
is it correct yeah i think that's yeah fine so this is like a bit wise so probably you can not use for that here we are we'll be getting a wrong search for that many a times right many a times we cannot use or and main uh, in many cases like once again in many cases uh, like in the data science we'll be learning in the pandas like in many of the cases we cannot use and in some cases in place of that and we should use this and right in much of the cases it right? depends on the situations like depend on the conditions when we are talking about two list being compared up for the any values and in that cases we are not going to use that and because that is one of the binary and like logical it's like see logical and is different and binary and is different okay two kind of things are there this is a binary operation this is a binary operation and this is a logical operation try to understand these two things are different but give your result same give you see if i say true uh, it's like true and false so that's false right because these are like also for the binary cases these are correct even if the logical even if the binary these are correct results right but every time it will not work like if if i having a list of numbers 1 2 3 4 something like this right and i'm using uh what example we can take up hmm what what are you getting 1 2 2 4 3 4 5 and from like 1 2 3 4 5 6 if i apply an and to get all the numbers over there we are getting 1 2 3 4 5 6 what if we apply like uh, in this situation it would like uh, it is not a good one right So see here we cannot use this and operator because that's an un unsupported operand type, right? So the working of both and it seems like like if, if it is same but not it is not same, right? That the first and is the bitwise operator. So all you can say the binary and, right? So this operator copies a bit to the result and then it works if both are like same or if not same right so both have different meanings that is a binary one and the next what we write a and d is a logical operator so that works like if both the operands are true then like it go for the operations and all okay so that's being the different thing right i think that is okay okay fine going next uh next question last one Yeah. So, uh, can you write a program for? Uh, for finding a square root. Uh, that would be hard uh, for finding a solution of a quadratic equation. Can I give just an example? We we have to use a module over here first of all. What can what what logic we can use? No idea, sir. Okay. Uh, Actually, here we can wasn't. here we can use something called C math, complex mathematics. Okay. All right, data science guys are ready. <laughs> okay. So here we can use something called C math. We'll be going up with tomorrow. Try to think on like what we can do with this. You can use math module. You can have you gone through the math module in the college? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, you might have gone with the square roots and all. Yeah. Mm, so, find out the solutions using that, like evaluations, using evaluations. What exactly? How to find out the root? 
mathematically how to find up the root import math and uh, we use square math dot sqrt uh yeah okay that's fine let's say if i am having an equation ax square uh, sorry ax square plus bx plus c equals to 0 so how you are going to find the root of this equation we have a formula so mm -hmm. minus b what is that formula I don't know what is that called, but I know the formula. Discriminant, you can use that. Minus b. b squared minus 4ac. For the discriminant, you can, we can use this. And for the, for, uh, for the solutions, what we are going to use? Like, let's say solution 1. Solution can, 1 can be used like? minus b minus yeah. the square root right yeah. uh, square root of discriminant divided uh, by 2a 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 yeah so you can use this right so with try to solve using this logic try to get the answer okay all right we'll get it uh, by tomorrow with this one Hmm, uh, once again, let me download this so that you can get the answers over there. Okay.